Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Hey yo man, it's your time. time. And fuck poverty. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Phil Leroy Judgmental Podcast. This is Phil back on here. What's up? And, and I'm Leroy. What's going on, Phil? Ain't not much. Well, I seen you uh, like uh, Jeff Baker's uh, tweet about DMX funeral. Did you watch it? I watched most of it. Okay. I ain't gonna say most of it. Maybe half of it. Mm-hmm. I've seen like so many cars. There had to be like a million motorcycles down there, all on the highway and stuff. I felt bad for the people that couldn't get on, you know, home from the highway. Right. Did, was this did on? You see it? No, no, I didn't watch it. Uh, was they this had on? black. They had blocked off the highway, and um, it was like a million motorcycles, and it was still more like way far out, still trying to get on the highway to get to where the rest of them was at line was so long and they had the cops out there blocking the highway so like all the regular people couldn't get past they had to just wait now was this on regular tv or just on youtube um i think it was streaming live on youtube but it it was on another channel too because when i had like the news on i don't know what channel it was but they had like the helicopter view and they were showing it Mm -hmm. well uh last week after we were done recording we got word that black rob passed away uh well he was in the hospital did he pass away a kidney failure i think so yeah so uh black rob um well really ain't too much i could say about his music war was good uh 24 hours to live was that his song was that may song i think that was mace okay well that's a song that's a good song um yeah, I like What's the song with G Dad? That wasn't a remix, was it? I know they did a remix of it. Um, was it Get This Money? Yeah. Now, was he on a remix or was that the the uh the regular song? I think it was the regular song. Or maybe they had a regular song, but the remix came out for the video. Because every mm-hmm. time I saw it, I always seen a whole squad doing it. Yeah, Ghostface and Craig mm-hmm. Mack. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what song it was. That was a good song too. And um when did we get word that Shock G passed away? Was that uh, Wednesday? Something like that. Yeah, when Shock G passed away, a digital underground passed away. Shock G was, uh, how old was Shock G? Shock G is. 57, uh, I think. 56. 57, 56. If he was born in the late 70s, if he was born with the late 70s, in between the late 70s to, to now, you know, like the uh, uh, two. Early 2000s or late 90s, the guy would have been a mega superstar in terms of his charisma. I mean, he was he was popular back then. Don't get me wrong, but in terms of his charisma and his production skills, the guy would have been astronomical. He'd have been on a, on another level. Of, of course, y'all. Of course, everybody gonna know he brought in Tupac to the world. And uh, names. What you think about Shock G? Phil? I used to like Shock G. I, I, he had that smooth, laid back voice, kind of like a uh, slick Rick. You know what oh. I mean? So, so that's why I kind of liked him. Did you like Danny Dane too? Yeah. Okay. Why? Now, are you, why you say him? Because he he do the same thing. Yeah, because you said like, smooth voice. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. Well, they had that concept album, Sex Package, and uh, I could be saying this wrong, but. It was a concept album. It was about uh, that was like one of the first type of uh, rap rap albums that that told the story, the whole album, not just the song. Mm-hmm. It was about uh, taking a pill that gives you a, uh, uh, like virtual sex or something. <laughs> I may have be getting it. It was wrapped in a condom, and it and it was like virtual sex. It, it make you the feeling that you were like having sex and people were, you know, addicted to it or wanted it and all that stuff. So, like I said, this was in 89, 90, if I'm not mistaken. So right there is telling you that he was ahead of his time because that's like, damn, looking at pornos on the Internet and those virtual reality headset and all that type of shit yep. going on now. So uh, what's your three uh, uh, favorite Shock G productions or Digital Underground songs? I got more than three, but uh, oh well, name them. You can name them. I like uh, most most of the ones. It's not really Shock G. It's more like uh, Digital Underground. You know what I mean? But uh, do what these are like when I was younger. Like I like these songs. I like mm-hmm. the stories and everything, and just the way they, you know, they they was decent songs. 
Do What You Like, The Humpty Dance, Same Song, No Nose Job. <laughs> that, yeah, that was funny. I like that joint. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then uh, the other joint that I remember, like, it was a hit, but I didn't really like it, but it was a nice, soft song, because if you watch the video, it's like dads kissing their daughters and stuff like that. It's called uh, Kiss, Kiss You Back. Back. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. And then there's a uh, Earlier this week, I heard uh, what's the other dude with Rosenberg? Maybe you know what I'm the, talking uh, about. Ebro, DJ? yeah, Ebro and Rosenberg. They played a joint called "The Mission," and it was uh, I never even heard of it. I don't know how that like flew under the radar, and I missed that when it came out because it came out around the time when I was listening to Digital Underground. But it was Shock G and uh, Big Pun. Mm-hmm. And then the other, uh, we're all in the same gang. I like that joint too. And I get around. Not really his songs, but it's like digital underground representing. Yeah, and, pl- and and plus he produced it. So you right. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that's all of them, but that's shit. That's about nine to ten. Well, uh, well, I agree with well, I pretty much agree with most of the songs that you named. I like Do What You Like. I like Oregano Flow. Oregano Flow was on his like what 94, 95 album. Uh I like the beat. And uh, so many tears, Tupac. That's one only mm-hmm. one, of few, one only few songs I like of Tupac. We are including uh, production too, by the way. It's not he's not on that song. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, where's Where's the love? I don't know if that's a Tupac song or a Digital Underground song or not. But Where's the love is with with Digital Underground and Tupac. I think that's a a Digital Underground song. I'm not sure. I was trying to look for it and see if. Um, what, what, what was it under while you were talking? But yeah, uh, he would have been a lot more popular if he was born a little bit later, later in life. So uh, rest in peace, Shock G. Right. And, and a, a little other note with the Humpty character. It was funny because I was reading the comments and there was people saying I, they never knew they was the same person. He was like, I just found out reading these comments. I never knew that. <laughs> and And it was funny because... When he would, when they were on Arsenio Hall, Shock G was there and Humpty was there, and like their performances and stuff. Whenever they guest appeared, it always they always was both there, but mm-hmm. like Shock G would never really say nothing. He would just be chilling in the back, and it looked just like him. Now right. years later, I found out that was his brother playing him, and then he was Humpty, so he could be all loud and crazy. Right, uh, Shock G, if I'm not mistaken, was born in New York and moved down to Florida. And I think he went to the West Coast like in his uh, late teens, maybe early 20s. But we will always consider him as a West Coast artist. But he went to the West Coast when he was like 18 and 19. And like uh, I was talking to Jay about it on a text. And uh, in terms of West Coast producers list, he should be up there. But, you know, when it when you talk about West Coast producers, the only the first thing people want to say is Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. But uh, he he should be definitely be up there. And I did check; it is a, a digital underground song, and it's not "Where's the Love." It's "What's Up with the Love" that so Tupac is love. on. Yeah, so it's a video of it. You can you can check that yeah, out. Yeah, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I think I know what song you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I guess we got to talk about 16 year old Michaela Bryant of Columbus, Ohio, shot by a cop on Tuesday, April the 20th. It's there's a video for it. We don't have to uh, play it in one thing because we we see you had to see it uh, quite a few times. They've been talking about it all week long. The video started with the officer getting out of his car at the house where the, where the police been dispatched after someone called 911 saying that they were physically threatened. The officer takes a few steps toward a group of people in the driveway when the girl who's black started swinging a knife wildly at another girl or woman who falls backwards. The officer shouts seven times, several times to get down. The girl with the knife then charges at another girl or woman who is pinned against the car. From a few feet away, with people on either side of him, the officers fire four shots and the team slumps into the ground. A black handled blade similar to a kitchen knife or a steak knife lies on the sidewalk next to her. Now, when you first saw it, well, first, what happened? What did you think when you first heard about it until you saw the video? Well, well, see, that's what I was saying. When the story first came out, all we heard was a 16-year-old girl shot by cops, you know what I mean? Breaking up a fight or whatever, you know what I mean? That's all we heard. We didn't know, like, all the details. 
And that's when LeBron, and he did jump the gun. He should have never probably posted what he posted without knowing all the details. Mm-hmm. And then once I saw it, I was like, this shouldn't even be wrapped up in all the other situations yeah, where we had right. cops killing people. You know what I mean? Right. Because the bottom line, she did have a night. She First of all, she's the one that called the cops because all them girls came to her place to jump her. But once the cops showed up, it should have been the end of it. Let the cops deal with it. She got a knife, and she's chasing a girl about to stab another girl, so the cop got to do what he got to do. I don't think he had to shoot her four times because she was standing in front of another girl. The cop could have killed both of them shooting at her four times. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to blame the cop for doing what he had to do either. And uh, my thing is, when I saw the video, I'm like, well, damn, we're not going to mention that to how the guy just kicked that little girl in the head? Well, I think that a lot of people didn't focus on that because I didn't see that either until you told me. Then I had to go back and I said, oh, shit, he did try. I don't know if it landed or not, but I did see him like kick for her head. But I didn't see that the first couple times I watched the video because I wasn't paying attention to that fight, that part. And uh, the girl, Michaela, Michaela was uh, in foster care. That was her foster mother's house. And that's another thing. Now, now we got her, her mom and stuff, her birth mom on interviews and talking about it like well the the kid already had a hard life so why are you on 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 tv i guess she she trying to look for a check or something i don't know well they put up a gofundme but the uh, gofundme took it down yeah i would have took it down too and uh not to mention that the girl that she was trying to stab with the pink uh track suit on had a a damn dog in her hand (laughs) and dropped the dog (laughs) I well, that's what I'm saying. Like when, when when the cop shot her, she was standing right in front of the girl, so the cop could have killed both of them. And then for him to turn around and say "Blue Lives Matter," what that got to do with anything? So, this, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's it. Uh, the way I and I have to apologize to you too, by the way, because when I interrupt you like that, because you'll talk and you'll stop, and now I'm thinking I can like chime in, then you'll start talking again. That's why I always interrupt you because I'm, I'm I was I was listening to you and waiting for you to stop, but then when you stopped, I started talking and then you start talking again. We do that Sorry. all the time, so so I apologize, but yeah, I'll, I'll be waiting for you to stop and when you stop and I start talking and you you'll start talking again. So sorry about that. I'm sorry. Well, foster mom Angela Moore said two of her former foster children came to her Columbus, Ohio home Tuesday to celebrate her birthday when a young woman and Michaela bickered over housekeeping. It was over keeping the house clean, Moore said. The older one told them to clean up the house because mom doesn't like the house dirty, Moore recalled, being told after she arrived home from work. So that's how it started. So it started with two with girls fighting over keeping the house clean, two young girls. And I had told I had told my mom about this and she said that the girls was wrong because they should have never came over there and mentioned how the house was dirty. And I'm saying, well, that's how that's what well, these were all young people. They they the girl was 16. I'm thinking those if the girls don't live there no more, I'm thinking that they're probably uh out fostered, got out out of foster foster mm-hmm. care because of age. So what you like, 18, 19? So so you're still fairly young. So I'm like, well, that's how young people talk. They was talking about how they're keeping the house, her house, her room was dirty or the house was dirty. So I didn't see anything wrong with them saying that. She was saying that uh, they shouldn't have said anything. And then she said, well, if they had said something, they should have said it in a nicer way. So I told her, now, do you think girls or, or children in foster care really know how to communicate like that? Yeah, but my thing is they wasn't there. They showed up with the intent to, to roll on that girl. No, it was a, a party for the mom. The, they were they was having a, a birthday. It was the foster mom's birthday party, and they was all over there. And they when they got there, I guess they saw that the house was dirty. So no, they didn't go over there to, to fight or anything like that. That was her. Would you say foster sisters or mm-hmm. girl, girl she used to live with? I don't I don't know how you want to call it. But no, they didn't they didn't go over there specifically to fight. It was it was the mom's uh birthday party, the foster mom birthday party. They was all going over there to celebrate. Yeah, sure. Hey, hey, the foster mom said it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she don't cause she don't want to get her other foster kids in trouble. What they do wrong? Came over there to fight. Okay. 
So so our girl, liberal Kathy Griffin, Kathy Griffin, the comedian who got in trouble with the Donald Trump on the head, with severed head of Donald Trump with the blood and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. she, she says, these are these liberals. These, these liberal people, they'll lead you right into a hole. Warning. How the hell does this police officer think it's a good idea to fire shots blindly into a group of teenagers having a fight? Yes, one of them had a knife. Oh, that never happened in your school or neighborhood? She didn't deserve to die, 16 years old. My thing about Kathy Griffin is, what what neighborhood did you live in where there was just a, a whole bunch of knife fights that happened all the time? And, and what school did she go to where, damn, it was a knife fight two days this week? <laughs> And again, with Kathy Griffin, I don't know if she has children, but I know she got nieces and, and, and little cousins and all that stuff that she's probably helping to go through school, which ain't nothing wrong with. She, uh, Kathy Griffin, uh, made a good life for herself. Which of them cousins, nieces, nephews that you have is going to a school where they have knife fights all the time? They're full of shit. Yeah, see, my thing is, the only thing I think about the cop is, the way he, he he was just shooting at her, like he could have shot anybody. Like, and if she was like in, in the area by herself, it'd be one thing. But it was other people around her, and the other girl was exactly like right behind her and a little bit off to the side of her. So he could have fucking killed both of them. That's so, my only thing. Okay, now April Bryan, CNN political analyst assistant on Bill O'Reilly, real time with Bill O'Reilly on Friday, says. Uh, another, another, uh, well, I'll get to that. She says, this is a black girl who was about to stab another black girl. Uh, that's what Bill Maher said. Black lives matter. Which one? Because a lot of people are saying the cop did the wrong thing. I'm saying which life. That's what Bill Maher asked her. She replied, he could have saved her. He could have shot her in the leg, Ryan insisted. He could have de, de escalated in a different way. He didn't even have to use a bullet. He could have just done something in different, done something differently. It should not be if there's a police officer coming to their home, someone dies. There are ways. They are trained to de escalate, and there are some people who don't use a taser. So Bill Amar said they are not. That's the problem. They are not trained to de escalate. First they of all, the escalate situations, they make it worse. A, a good job, Bill O'Reilly, for bringing that shit up. April Bryan, I don't know what type of school she went to. I tell you, these these upper class, uh, uh, high fluting, tooting blacks, they're full of shit. If uh, ask, I want to ask April Bryan this question. Suppose you come to your house and you see that that okay, say I I think she has children. Okay, she you come in the house. Somebody broke in and got one of your daughters hostage. Now, if a cop there, let's just say he holding a knife or a gun or something at, at, at your daughter and a cop was there. Do you just want do you want the cop to shoot the guy in the leg? Yes or no. That April Bryan is completely full of shit. And these upper blacks, they, they just say the dumbest things because they think that we'll fall for it. He could have just shot her in the leg. All right. Let's just say if somebody had, was broken to your house and, and got one of your daughters or your children hostage and a cop was there, do you want the cop that she just shoot him in the leg or just use a taser? He has a weapon on your on your daughter or on your child. Well, it's a, it's a two edged sword, because if, if, if that's your daughter, you want them to kill that person to stop them from hurting your daughter. But if you're if that's your daughter, the one that's doing the, the hurting you don't really want to see her die. You'd rather see her get tased or get shot in the leg or something, get arrested. You know what I mean? Uh, so, in other words, she's full of shit, like I said, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and say, say you're right. She is full mm -hmm. of shit. <laughs> I tell you, these these upper blacks, they'll, they'll lead you into a, There's another, just like the liberal Kathy Griffin, they'll lead you right into a ditch. Don't follow him because she she doesn't believe what she's speaking. She doesn't. And I'm saying I'm looking at this and I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? She could. What cop do you know? Now, here's a political analyst. So she's uh, uh, interviewing people and all different types of people and everything. And she's on CNN. So she's definitely deliver, uh, interviewing different type of people. When did she ever heard about a cop shooting somebody in the leg? You're not trained to shoot anyone in the leg. Well, Let's talk about, uh, we always talk about 
the ma the maturation or maturation with uh teachers these young teachers being in school so we're going to talk about 31 year old makia lee bowden of Tomball, texas she was arrested and charged with continuously section of sexual abuse of a child here's the video Tonight, another teacher from the Houston area accused of sex crimes involving a child. This time, it's a teacher from Tomball ISD, and tonight, police say the allegations came from a former student. Our Rochelle Turner is live from Tomball Intermediate School with this developing story. Rochelle, good evening. Jonathan, good evening. Tomball Police and Child Protection Services are conducting their own investigations. Many parents we spoke to today were outraged when they heard about these allegations. It's appalling. It's terrifying. That's how parents in Tomball feel after learning this woman, 31-year-old Marka Bowden, is accused of continuous sexual abuse of a child after police received allegations from a former student at Tomball Intermediate School. Vincent Coulter is a parent and couldn't believe the news. It's undespicable. The worst crime ever because the parents of whoever this is involved in, they've put in the trust into that woman. And now look where they're at. Hey. The district is aware of the allegations, and Bowden is no longer employed at Tomball ISD. I just got the email this morning, and honestly, that kind of stuff outrages me. This mother didn't want to show her face and was very concerned because she has a child in the district. The district says any and all employee misconduct allegations are taken seriously and are investigated thoroughly and promptly. The safety of our students in Tomball ISD is our number one priority and any sustained allegations of employee misconduct will not be tolerated. And Umbo ISD police arrested 25 year old Tyler Hardy Krosky with possession of child pornography. He was an eighth grade history teacher at Westlake Middle School in Atascacita. It's wrong in every which way you look at it and the person are to be taken away from children. Now, Bowden was booked into the Harris County Jail, and Tomball ISD is providing the appropriate social-emotional support for students and staff. That's the very latest reporting here live in Tomball. I'm Rochelle Turner, KPRC 2 News. Rochelle, thank you. Like we said before, you're not too far. If you 25 or 30 years old, you're not too far uh, behind a doing 13, 14-year-old on maturity plane. They all into the same shit. <laughs> it, cause it, it's, it's so common now that these teachers, these young, good looking teachers, female teachers is messing around with these boys in school. She could have went to any bar and met a dude. She just wanted to get her shit off. Yep. Boating reportedly admitted to having sex with the victim in the beginning in 2018 when he was only 13 years old. Court documents also say she sent the victim dozens of explicit videos and photos. I think it's more to the story that we don't know about, too. That why did he call the cops? Was he trying to get some money out of her or I'm going to tell? And she was like, I ain't got it or something. Was it I over with? Know. Was it over with between them two and he was still trying to see her? Or I'm, You know what I mean? Why, after all that time and pictures and seeing each other, he then runs to the cops and tell the cops? Like, that should if, if he felt that way, he should have been doing, went to the cops as soon as they approached him. Mm-hmm. Probably because, uh, like you said, she probably wanted to stop or, or some shit like that. Or, or or maybe the money stopped. She stopped giving the money or whatever. So we have that uh, uh, story. Now we have another story. And uh, was this is this in Texas also uh, of a teacher, a teacher who took a photo that was fired for teaching, for taking a photo of her foot on a black student's neck. Here's the video. Well, here's the report. I keep saying video like, uh, all right, there's there's three videos that I'm going to do here. Here's the one of the mother's perspective on the incident. Tonight, we begin with controversy in the Greenville ISD. The district is investigating a picture of a teacher with her foot on a student's neck. School leaders say it is unacceptable. But the boy's mother has a different view. Candace Sweat has more on what the mom and district officials have to say about that photo and what comes next. This picture has people demanding answers. A Lamar Elementary teacher in Greenville placed her foot on a student's neck, then sent the picture to the child's mother. And yes, this is also in Texas. 
Despite the picture going viral, the boy's mother, who did not want to be identified, says she does not believe there was ill intent. I don't think there was there was any harm intended. There was no bad intentions. And regardless of what anybody thinks, I'm, I'm going to stand on that. She says she has a close relationship with the teacher, as does her son. And the picture was part of a joke to get her son to turn in his work. She said, I'm going to put my foot on your neck. And he said, ha ha, I bet you won't. And she said, ha ha, I bet I will. <laughs> this is school. And age. <laughs> another student told him, I bet you won't lay down. And he laid on the ground. And that's when I guess she put her foot on there. She says she feels the teacher had no real intentions of harming her son. But the picture didn't sit well with her sister, who posted it on social media. She was like, it's not funny. It's not a joke. You shouldn't be laughing at it. The photo went viral the same day emotions ran high after Officer Derek Chauvin was found guilty in the death of George Floyd. Family member Emily Thompson says she was upset about the photo before speaking with the child's mother. I was mad. <laughs> Very mad. While her anger has subsided, she still feels the teacher made a poor choice. She should know better. I'm a professional, and in my profession, uh, we know what to say and what not to say. The situation is now in the hands of the district, and Superintendent Demetrius Liggins weighed in. It's completely unacceptable. It's completely out of the norm um, for our community. The child's mother says she's spoken with the district and the teacher and doesn't want her to lose her job. She assured me that she would never do anything to hurt me or my child, and I know that. In Greenville, Candace Sweat, NBC5. All right, so uh, maturation again with these damn teachers in these schools. They having these joking. You're supposed to be teaching these kids, and y'all sitting around joking about putting your foot on a damn kid's net. Mm. Well, that that's the first video. That's from the mother. Now, here's the, from the father's perspective. I didn't like it from the moment I seen it. A frustrated father. That's not supposed to happen. Told me about his 11-year-old son. My son. Yeah, yeah, my son's a good child. A good boy. Play sports. Good in school. Shamel's son is a student at Lamar Elementary in Greenville. And at school Tuesday, Shamel says his son's teacher took this staged photo with a foot on his neck. I'm very mad about the situation. Very mad about it. The boy's mom didn't talk on camera, but she's more forgiving. The teacher texted her the picture and mom showed it to us. Mom said it was done as a joke after the teacher told her son to return an assignment where she'd put a foot on his neck. We reached out to the teacher, but didn't hear back. My initial reaction was disgust. Demetrius Liggins is the superintendent for Greenville ISD. Well, at this point, the teacher has been placed on administrative leave. We do believe in respecting and treating all of our um, neighbors and especially our students and um, families within the school district with dignity and respect. And we're a community that truly embraces and respect each other, our differences, and, and celebrate uh, the many cultures that exist here. I'm mad, man. I'm furious about it. The boy's uncle said no story makes this acceptable. Whether, you know, he agreed to do it, she asked him to do it, it don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? He 10. He don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? She do, though. The superintendent told me. Thank, thank you, uncle. Uh, the uncle, the family friend, and the father is the only one in their family that got some damn sense. Well, hold on. Let me let me finish it before you uh, say something. The investigation will be thorough and swift. I don't take it lightly at all. He says appropriate action will be taken. That picture um, is does not define our teachers. It does not define the way we treat our students and what the expectation is throughout our district. In Greenville, I'm Alex Rozier. All right. Now, the last video is from the perspective of the student who was laying in the photo with the foot on his neck. So so the mom didn't want, well, I'll get to that. Tonight we're hearing from directly a young student who is pictured with a teacher's foot on his neck. This was at a North, elementary, uh, North Texas elementary school. It did happen. The picture started circulating pretty quickly on Facebook and Greenville ISD then put the teacher involved on administrative leave while they investigate. So what's the real story here? Well, some in the family tonight tell us that including that very student who you'll hear from, they don't see a problem with what happened. Our Nicole Nielsen explains from Greenville. I think she was doing it as a joke. Like, she didn't, like, put pressure on it or anything. Tonight, Zaylin Jackson, the 11-year-old student of Greenville ISD, seen in this controversial photo with his teacher's foot on his neck, is speaking out. I feel like she was just playing. 
She did me harm. For context, his mother, who didn't want to speak on camera, says she's known the teacher as a friend for years. Zalen says he also considers her his friend. But he explains what happened what? yesterday at Lamar Elementary School. The teacher gave me a note and she said, my mom can uh, put, put her foot on my neck if she have to. I did go with the joke because like, I don't think she was going to put pressure and she never did. But he does understand what it may look like to others. People think she was just trying to copy George Floyd. Including some of his family members who were deeply unhappy with the photo. No matter what race, what person, you don't put your foot on nobody else's child. Today, the district superintendent said, joke or not, a photo like that should never have been taken. Whether the student was a willing participant or not, if it was a staged picture or not, um, it was still extremely highly inappropriate and should not have taken place and definitely should not have been photographed. And though the picture has created quite a stir, Zaylin himself has a final message. I, I don't think she should be fired. Yes, she should. In Greenville, Nicole Nielsen, CBS 11 News. His mom got to him. So that's what... Uh, this is why they say these kids are behind in school because of uh, the, the, the quarantine and they can't go to school and got to work, go to school from home. They go to school and it's shit like this where they playing around and she got her foot on his neck. I don't care if it was joking or not. You shouldn't even be doing that. Why are you having all this kind of joking conversation with a child for anyway? Mm -hmm. And and then the son said that's her that's his friend too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the aunt, I forgot the aunt the uncle, the father, and the, the family friend is the only four in this, that kid's life with some damn sense. And another thing, okay, so the mom didn't want her picture taken on video, but yet she allowed her son to do this interview. What sense does that make? They never even showed the uh, the teacher. Nope. All you see is why, that lead. Why, why is she on suspension? She should have been fired. You don't play like that. And the mom is an idiot for allowing it to happen. And, and then condoning it. Like, my mom would have been down at the school ready to kick her ass and probably would have kicked her ass. Uh, They fired her. They, they, they did were, fire her? Yeah. Yeah, they fired her. Well, she resigned. She didn't get fired, you know, for her, her pension and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Lamar Elementary School, something else happened to that school. I remember hearing Lamar in the past. Something else, some other controversy or something happened at that school. Uh... I don't see anything. I don't see anything with Lamar Elementary. The only thing that pop up is this is all this stuff. That's all the new stuff. I'm telling you, something happened at the school. I'm gonna look at it later and see if I can find it. But I know that name sounds familiar. A couple of weeks ago, I I had this video for a while. A couple of weeks ago, about the postal worker in Michigan got beaten by. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Got beaten by no, two. <laughs> Got beaten by two women. Here's the report. <laughs> I'm told the postal worker had to be taken to the emergency room after I, I she bet, was jumped. Why is he shaking and carrying on like that? I, I bet she did have to take go to the uh, <laughs> the hospital. Cause shit, I wouldn't have been try. I wouldn't even throw a punch. I just let him on. I just lay on the ground, and let them kick me. Did you, 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 when you talked about the uh, Cameron and Larry Frisburn, did you see the whole thing? The interview? Yeah, not the whole interview, but just that that segment when he was talking about uh, Larry yeah. Frisburn. And did you mm -hmm. see when a guy got mad at Cameron from stopping, yep. the, <laughs> stopping him from getting beat up? Yeah, you know, I'm like the same way. Like, please hit me, shit. <laughs> well, here we go. Hey, here this woman. She a, a government work, a, a government worker. And she get she get beat up by two people. Shit, I wouldn't even move. I just lie and say I got PTSD. I got headaches. My back hurt. My knees hurt. All type of shit. Hey, that's how they play the game. Uh huh. In fact, you'll see in that video, it was the grandmother of the man who happened to record it. A USPS mail carrier is recovering after an attack in Flint. It happened outside an apartment. Why you got a smirk on your face? Is she pregnant? Why her belly look like that? I, now, I don't know, but you you start laughing when you see them girls pound on this old lady like this. No, I didn't. <laughs> complex near downtown no, Thursday afternoon. 
a bystander live streamed the melee on Facebook where it went viral. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I've been in this business 29 years, and that's the first I've ever even uh, witnessed something like that. Uh, my copper even fed up with the bullshit. <laughs> while on duty. My man look like he slept a good sleep about five years. Has been arrested. <laughs> They have a line on the second woman. Although the man recording the attack says the women were after stimulus checks. Bro, y'all hit the mailman. They trying to get that stimulus. Get serious. Chief Green says that's not what sparked the altercation. It's been investigated um, as possible road rage that sparked this, but that's still under investigation at this time. But we're we're believing it, it has to involve road rage. Another Flint postal worker tells Fox 2 the women thought the mail carrier cut them off, but she actually had the right of way. They struck the carrier's truck with their car. That's said to have led to an argument, and then Ready. this. You gotta let this happen. It's trap. It's trap. I don't want them to hit you, and I'm. Two of our detectives obtained this live stream, and um, immediately, with the community's help, I have to give a lot of credit to the um, detectives that were in charge of this investigation. To the two suspects seen in that viral video were um, immediately um, identified, including the vehicle that they were um, traveling in. We have a statement from the law enforcement arm of the post office, which reads in part, postal inspectors are aware of the incident involving a postal service employee. In incidents such as this, we work closely with law enforcement partners and prosecutors, in this case, the Flint Police Department, the Flint County District Attorney's Office and the United States Attorney's Office to solve these crimes and determine the best course of action for prosecution. Flint PD tells me the women will likely face both local and federal charges. Uh-oh. I'm Randy Wembley, and this is The Edge. Uh-oh, ladies, I don't know. Now, yeah, like you true. said, like you said, that uh, postal worker, I bet you she'd never come back to work. She's going to yeah. get a check from the government. The rest are like PTSD and emotional trauma and all types of shit. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, she got two ways out because she had that car accident, too. They hit her and then they 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 beat her up. So she can just lie and say she was hurt from the car accident. Well, I'm sorry, not lie, but, you know, expunge the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. I told Shay, I said, well, if I was the post office... Uh, and I got dipped on like that. I'll never get mail again at their house. And when they find out why the electric and all that shit is turned off, that's because they ain't get a bill. Because you know, a lot of people. I ain't gonna say what type of people, but you know, some people don't pay bills unless they unless they see it. So if they don't see a bill, they don't worry about it. Hey, they never sent it to me. Go ahead. Some people would be like, some people would be like, uh, damn, I ain't paid my electric this month. Let me call and see what's going on. You know what I mean? And pay it. Then you got other people. If they don't see a bill, they don't care about it until they see it. Of what people is this? Just certain people in the world. Who's who's who certain people? <laughs> uh, poor people. Oh, okay, I'm thinking you talking about black people, but uh, go. <laughs> anybody can be poor. Ain't got to be black. No, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, last not uh last ever news episode that we did, we talked about uh Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Colas, and we one house. But she has three other houses. Colas and her partner, who also purchased a custom ranch and 3.2 acres in Conyers, Georgia, last year for $415,000. That residence come with a, comes complete with a own pool and airplane hangar. Property records show Colas has bought two other Los Angeles homes in recent years. In 2016, it's said to have paid five hundred and ten thousand dollars for a three bedroom home in Englewood. In 2018, Carlos added another home to her property portfolio by laying down five hundred and ninety thousand dollars for a four bedroom home in South LA, just profiting off of black men's death and misery. Uh here's a video where she was on with Lamont Mark Lamont Hill, our boy from Philly. Uh, BNC News. I don't know if that's a, a cable channel or just a YouTube thing. He he, they do this news thing with uh, him. Uh, you remember Sharon Reed that used to work here? Mm -hmm. 
and uh uh what's that guy that that did the uh that do the I guess he doesn't do the, the Fox sports news anymore. Well here's here she go explaining shit. Well expect ex, uh here bullshit coming because you already can tell who's interviewing her. You already know it's gonna be some bullshit coming. So here we go. Next, a Black Lives Matter co-founder is under fire after a recent home purchase in the hills of Los Angeles. And it's one of the four new homes that Patrice Khan Colors has bought in the last Dang. five years, leaving many to wonder just where their donations are. This is the wrong video, by the way, but I'll just, I'll just keep playing it. They're actually going. Reporter Kayla Brantley is with us now for more on this one. And Kayla, a lot of people who have given money to BLM are, are giving these property purchases a real hard second look. But is the organization taking the question seriously? Well, it appears so, Thomas. The head of the New York chapter of Black Lives Matter is calling for a probe into Patrice Khan Colors' finances. Specifically, Hawk Newsom wants to know just how much of her own money Colors is donating to charitable organizations. Colors owns three homes in Los Angeles and one in Georgia, all of these purchased within the last five years. The latest is a $1.4 million home in Topanga Canyon. BLM received over $90 million in donations just last year, and a lack of transparency about who and where those dollars are going to has been the subject of criticism. Well, part of the reason that people are especially outraged by this is Colors is a self-described Marxist and <laughs> 1.4 million oh, she. doesn't exactly fit into that model of society. Uh, but, you know, maybe she is just a real estate lover at heart. We shall see if that investigation proves otherwise. Kayla Brantley reporting. Thank you. Okay, now here's the video I mentioned that she was on Mark Lamont Hill's show of BNC News. I've never heard of it before. Also a critique, though, from the left that would say, um, if you are a trained Marxist, if we're talking about a certain kind of radical politic, that extravagant homes of any sort or multiple properties of any sort is itself contradictory to the ideology that you hold. And so it's not about having money per se, but that it's about uh, or about property per se, but it's about there being a potential contradiction between your express politics and your lived practice. Sure. And I think that is a critique that is um, wanting. And I say that because um, the, the, the way that I live my life is in direct support to Black people, including my Black family members, uh, first and foremost. And uh, for so many Black folks who are able to invest um, in themselves and their community, they choose to invest in their family. And that's what I've chosen to do. <laughs> um, I have a child, I have a brother, <laughs> mental illness that I take care of. Um, I support my mother um, and I support many other family members of mine. And so I see um, uh, my money as not my own. I see it as um, my family's money as well. So her excuse is that uh, her family members are staying in those houses so she can continue being a Marxist. She's not getting any income because yeah, her family. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another video I, I, I want to I show you about uh, Miss Patrice. She's fighting racism and this is how she fights racism. I don't know if this this was done last year or this year. But uh, take a look at how she's fighting racism. My name is Patrice Colors, and welcome to Fuck White Supremacy, Let's Get Free with the Hammer Museum. I want you all to step in wherever you are and do the electric slide with me. This performance is for every single person who is being impacted by white supremacy. Every single person that's being impacted by COVID-19, by sexism, homophobia, transphobia, let's dance together. No, ladies and gentlemen, that is not that is not a Saturday Night Live skit. That was not a Saturday Night Live skit or any other type of skit they did for YouTube. Yes, she wants to fight racism by doing an electric slide sponsored by Uggs. So you mean to tell me this is the reason why you got them damn house houses profiting off of black man's death, black man's misery by doing an electric slide and getting sponsorship money. Well, people stupid for donating it to her, you know what I mean? And not knowing where you're donating your money to, actually. Because I've read somewhere where they said it was like three different Black Lives Matter uh, companies and a lot of the 
one was supposed to be like a, a non-profit, one was supposed to be like a charity thing, and then you got the other one that's supposed to be like an NPO business. So a right. lot of people were sending their money to the wrong one, and she's probably one of the wrong ones where they're just taking that money and she's just fucking putting it in the bank and buying property and shit. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't tell you about this one. Uh, I'm just going to play the video and I'll I'll explain it to you afterwards. What does this mean for me and other residents who live on a well who now have paved, you know, paved uh, development coming in and potentially messing up our quality of um, of drinking water? That is not making a safe neighborhood for me where it currently exists as a safe neighborhood. And I think that's something that um, needs to be included in conversations moving forward so that the developer is accountable to the community within which it's situating its development. Mr. Collins, you have some thoughts? I did. I think that we kind of lost our way on what we're talking about here. We're here to approve the standards that have been presented and if Mrs. Rosario has something about one it's of those Dr. Standards, Rosario, thank you. If Mrs. Rosario has something Do- about Dr. One Rosario. Of, <laughs> well, you know, I'm sorry, your name it's says okay. on here, Carrie Rosario. Hey, Carrie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Dr. If you got, Rosario. If you got something specific, I would call you. On, Lee, let him talk. Uh, yeah. Call me as I would like to be called. That's how I'm identifying. It, it doesn't really matter. We're here. It to matters to me. Project. It matters to me. And I'm, out of I'm, respect, I'm I would like you to call me by the name that I'm asking you to call me by. Thank you. Your screen says Carrie Rosario. I'm anyway, verbalizing my name is Dr. Carrie what? Rosario. And it really speaks very negatively of you as a commissioner to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you're 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 negotiating something that happened four years ago. We've taken on this function. This is not a zoning function, this is a planning function. And Mr. Chairman, I think that if there's something that she has, something specific in these standards, let's hear what it is. Everything we've heard. Well, Phil, that man, uh, what's his name? Tony Collins was fired mm-hmm. by by the city of North Carolina just because he he didn't call her doctor. But the thing is, if she first of all, I think they they might have had past beef with each other because when you go to them, uh, uh, I told you when you go to them. Uh, those meetings, those those borough or city meetings, mm-hmm. I don't know what to call it. It's always an argument. Everyone I've been one, every everyone I've been to has always been an argument there. So I, I'm thinking both of them had had beef with each other, and uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Co- Mr. Collins was trying to be an asshole. And, and, and I don't know, think so. I I don't know because the I I, I don't know. I'm thinking they may because- like. Go ahead. I see I see both sides of it because I work with doctors and I call all the doctors, doctor such and such, doctor such and such. But I got co-workers that just call them by their last name. You know what I mean? And I've seen people call them by their first name. I don't do that. I call them doctor such and such. But if I was if I was in a Zoom meeting or something and it had their name, like if she wanted to be called doctor such and such, she should have put that as her title. If she don't put it as a title, she can't then turn around and get mad at somebody for not calling her doctor. Even if you know she a doctor, like I got, I have patients that come in as doctors, and I don't call them doctor. I call them by their regular name. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. That's what's on. The, that's what's on the schedule. That regular name. It doesn't say doctor such and such. If it says doctor such and such, then I call them doctor. You know what I mean? Right. So she should have put it as her label on her Zoom meeting as her name, doctor, whatever her name was. She didn't put that. She just put a regular name. So that's her government, her birth name. If you want to call her by that, that's not being disrespectful. So uh, the lady told to her colleagues that Collins was was using his white privilege by refusing <laughs> her request, according to Greensboro News and Record. So they said that he was just using his white privilege. Do you see white privilege going on in that? No, <laughs> no. And she wanted to hold up the meeting to make that that point. Mm-hmm. I tell um, you, any. If you have he called her Miss, he called her Miss such and such. He didn't even had to call her Miss. She got a regular name, just like everybody else. Right. I tell you, if you got some free time and you and you want to get laugh or two, go to one of those meetings. The same shit you just saw here is going to is going to happen in in your uh a borough meeting, a township meeting. <laughs> the same one. Now here's another uh thing I want to show you. I'm not going to uh set it up. I'm just going to let it play. <laughs> this is it's two videos. This one is from uh, WPVI, the ABC affiliate here in Philly. 
I just want you to just listen, listen, look at it. Well, you will listen to it here on a podcast, but, you know, we're watching these videos. A man in Newark has formed a very special bond with a perhaps unsuspecting pet, a young doe he aptly named Bambi after his favorite cartoon. You see, a few months ago, Messiah Eel left a bread trail and was pretty... Look at that thing on that motherfucking couch. <laughs> uh, well, we ain't done yet. Hold on. He shocked when Bambi followed it inside the house and made herself at home. Now when she comes in the house... Uh... Yes, Phil. Here's a new way black. A new way black got a deer in the fucking house. Brother. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said I'm just going to let her play. But uh, here we go. She she likes to get fed. Her favorite spot is the couch. She'll go over, sleep on the couch, <laughs> wake up, go tap on the door, and she's ready to leave. Go back to the woods. You have got to kid. <laughs> It'd be that simple. <laughs> simple, right? Bambi likes car rides, gets along with kids and the dog, but not the cat. She answers to the name Bambi, and they now consider her one of the family members, bathing her, grooming her, removing ticks. Uh, uh, Messiah says he doesn't own the deer, but she do does come and go galore. every few days. And yes, they have a bond. She always comes back. It'd be random times. Like, I'll just come out the house, and there she is waiting for me. I'm like, oh, hey, baby, I wasn't expecting this. Like, you know, I'll, I'll make some time for you, go in the house and get her, her like, she loves, like, fruits. And, like, I try to feed her fruits and, like, little nuts and stuff. Yeah, and also she gets jealous when the dog gets too much attention. So, Eel has been contacted by the Delaware Department of Natural Resources, who let him know that allowing deer into the house is illegal possession of wildlife. So, he is now looking into obtaining a deer license because they're connected. This is a goddamn it's a deer. Idiot. Let's keep him. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now that was from WPVI, a, the ABC affiliate here in Philly. Now here's the here's channel WCAU, the NBC affiliate here <laughs> in Philly. <laughs> Messiah didn't think he'd befriend the small deer that stole his grandma's pizza, but you can see. Call me a deer. Come here, buddy. They became buddies. Little cut right here. And she just goes through here. Messiah now has a piece of fence peeled back, so Bambi, that's her name, can come and go freely to the huge field behind the family property. Messiah read up on deer nutrition and would occasionally give her a balanced meal. Until recently, he let her come into the house. She'd come over, get some love, curl up on the couch, eat some food. She'd just be chilling. <laughs> but Messiah got a lot of attention, maybe too much, on social media when he... Took her for a car ride to the store with him. He <laughs> was on a little, just a little joy ride, you know, to the store. Like when Messiah can't find his friend for a few days, Bambi, <laughs> Bambi, he calls for his other animal friend. Come here, boy. Hercules can often find Bambi, and they love to play together. He interacts with a deer and plays with a deer. Now, we weren't able to find Bambi today, but attention has found Messiah. He has heard the state says it's illegal to have a wild animal, but he makes it clear this isn't his pet. He doesn't leash her up, and she's no longer allowed in the house or car. He doesn't appreciate the negative comments he has seen on social media. People don't frown upon during hunting season and stuff like that, so why should frown upon me caring? Yeah, that's it. This 22-year-old landscape business owner says if he's guilty of anything, it's caring for an animal everyone just traditionally doesn't interact with. Like, you know how they, they, people don't want me to have a deer, they may say negative comments. They, they hunt them and everything, so why can't somebody give love back to them and, and enjoy their company and stuff? Bambi! In Newark, Tim Furlong, NBC10 News. A new wave black, ladies and gentlemen, is not think, a... I Go think if he, wanted, if he wanted to do that, he can do that. But keep your business to yourself. Why do everybody always got to post stuff online and then get mad when you get the negative reactions? Mm -hmm. These new wave blacks is not age, it's a total mindset. Because when you ever heard that a, <laughs> that a black person would have a deer in the house with a deer on your couch with the fleas and the Lyme disease and stuff that those mm -hmm. things carry, you it got that this, thing? It was this show that used to come on that I used to love. It was called uh, Fatal Attractions, and it showed like people with exotic pets and stuff as their animal. It was a few black people on here, but they, though, most of those shows ended up uh, episodes ended bad with the animal wound up attacking the owner. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, like my aunt, she had deers come up to our house and she would feed them in the back. But as far as letting them in the house is ridiculous, man. Exactly. <clears throat> So, uh, Philip last episode mentioned Justin Jeffries, the Minnesota Vikings Pro Bowl rookie wide receiver that the Eagles could have drafted. He expressed his anger about not being drafted by the Eagles and seek his revenge in an interview with GQ Magazine. Okay, GQ Magazine asked him, 
but it's clear you are button star. There was so much bu buzz around your name heading into the draft night. One possibility was the Eagles. At one point, I heard that you started looking for housing in the area. You ended up falling one spot later. There was a viral video from the Vikings draft room about how excited they were to have you. What was it like to go through all of that? So Justin Jeffries asked, asked, answered, I'm sorry, leading to the draft, you know, they had all those mock drafts and people sharing their opinions on who was going, going to go where. A lot of people had me going to Philly and I thought I was going to Philly. Honestly, the funniest part is Philly was on the board. And when Minnesota called me at first, I thought it was Philly, but I answered the phone and it was Minnesota. It's crazy how all that, all that happened and everything. But I'm definitely, definitely, definitely excited that I'm in the Vikings rather than Philly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so GQ asked him, would it feel any better if you ever played Philly because you become this star and they missed out? Justin, Justin Jeffers asked his answers. I'll, I'll always treat every game the same, no matter who I'm playing. But Philly will definitely be edgier, you know, especially because they passed on me. Now, you called it last episode. Now, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. The experts always say who's the best available at that position. So if we're looking for that position. You're supposed to take the best available at the position. But for some reason, the Eagles always think they're the smartest person in the room and say, nah, that, we're not going to go with the experts say who's the best available. We're going to pick our own guy. And that's what they do. Mm -hmm. So you still uh, worried about this draft that's coming on Thursday, right? Yeah, you, it's Thursday. You worried? I mean, it is what it is. We fuck up drafts every year, so I'm just going to hope for the best. <laughs> so, uh, Harry Roseman and Nick Sirianni did a, a Zoom meeting. I don't, it was some sometime during the week. And uh, he, Harry Roseman explained why the Eagles swapped six overall pick to number 12. I quote, the reason we traded back from 6 to 12 is because flexibility creates opportunity. Well, I do agree with that, Roseman said. Flanked on either side by head coach Nick Sirianni and vice president of player personnel Andy Weddell. For us having an extra first round pick, when you look back at things, they are hard to acquire in a first round draft pick. What we had to do is sit there and think, there are 12 guys in the draft. Are we comfortable with now, uh, going going forward in the meeting, uh, in the Zoom meeting, uh, press conference, I don't know what you want to call it, should the Eagles fans then expect the Eagles could potentially move back up with the Panthers and Lions picks, among other rumors available on draft night? All of that planning and thought conversations are happening right now. I, when I read that, I said, oh, shit. Roseman said, conceding. Has that has he's talking to all these teams about picking in the first round. We are talking to teams in front of us and seeing what would it look like because when you're on the clock, that's hard to do. You don't want to have a conversation like that on the clock. I read that, I was like, Oh shit, here we come. They might fuck up that pick. A move, it would be move. nothing new. That's what we always do. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> your boy Dan Olofsky on ESPN. Had uh, we're talking about the Eagles and draft and everything. Come to find out that your new coach, Nick Sirianni, when it comes to drafting, he used a, a great method called rock, paper, and scissors. <laughs> Here's the video. Are you buying a quarterback competition in Philly right now? No. Oh. There's no quarterback competition, and they're not taking a quarterback at 12. Listen, this became Jalen Hurts' football team when they traded away Carson Wentz. Not when they went backwards in the draft. This is Jalen Hurts' football team. Kev, they took him in the second round for this moment. They took him in the second round for the potential that he was going to be their starting quarterback of the future. And now this is a great That's opportunity not true. for him with yes, the football team to play good football. And the Eagles, frankly, should be hoping that happens. Mm -hmm. They should be sitting there going, we could be one of the lucky organizations in the NFL that took a quarterback and not first round, mm -hmm. and then he becomes a really good player, and then we've got him on the cheap for three years. And they've got those potential three first-round picks next year that they can supplement their roster around Jalen Hurts. This is Jay uh, you, you see, I need that. You see why I need to be on ESPN or need to be on somewhere else because I said mm -hmm. the same thing. Well, I don't like Dan Olowski, though, but there you go. 
center to his football team. Because sometimes he say the stupidest shit sometimes. He do. They're not taking a quarterback. All right, helps the cap space, like you mentioned there, yeah. for the next few years. Another moment from Sirianni's press conference made headlines today. He revealed a unique way of how he gauges the competitiveness of draft prospects when meeting with them. I played a couple of them at rock, paper, scissors. Right? <laughs> that was as easy as that. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's see how competitive you are. I'm competitive. I'm going to be talking trash to him. Did you talk trash back to me? Right? Um, Jeopardy. There's different ways to do it. It looks a lot of different ways. Anything you compete at, when you compete with somebody that's competitive, they're going to go at you no matter what, no matter what game you're playing. Plenty of jokes have been made about that uh, comment. What this coach is an idiot, too. I've seen rock, paper, scissors in the locker room a lot, and that's kind of private conversation. But I've got a couple questions. Like, was it best of three? Because rock, paper, scissors should be a one-time thing. Like, you either win or you lose. This isn't a best of three or best of five. And then is it – did he go rock, paper, scissor, or is it rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Mm -hmm. No, there's different ways to do it. So I I'd, I'd want to know – It should always be best of three, by the way. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, so uh, yeah. it's one time. One time, and, and, and we're going to say shoot. Okay, we're going rock, paper, scissors, shoot one time, and you got to go eye to eye. Too often people are trying to watch the hands, Let's okay? Go. Ready? Hopefully you didn't watch NFL Live. Yeah, that's yeah. what I always do. Ready? Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. No! Ah, boom! Man, I'm not competitive enough. Eagles fans out there. We may be in trouble at <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> Judging people on playing rock, paper, scissors for their competitive nature. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> this coach is an idiot, like I said. Mm-hmm. So so you still don't uh so you still down on the picks and all that stuff. You still don't think we're gonna get anything, huh? Well, I hope they do, but reading our track record says we're gonna fuck it up just like we always do. So uh <clears throat> How many episodes of Invincible did you watch? I'm all caught up. Okay, I didn't watch the uh, last episode. I watched it last night. Okay, it's, well, uh, it's just one episode left. Oh, so it's eight this season? Um, The next episode come out on the 30th. Yeah, so it comes out uh, on the 30th, the last episode. Okay, well, my thing is... uh. Invincible is na he named himself as Invincible. Why the hell he always getting his ass beat? I was just saying that this shady the other day when I was watching. I said for somebody to be invincible, he always getting his ass kicked. I mean, you have to you have to take into consideration he is a young just learning his powers too. You right. know what I mean? But, but damn, and it's funny how every time he says something or somebody mention Invincible, they go to the screen and say, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cheesy. And another thing about that show, it seemed like everybody on the show was like on some. They they promoting racial uh, dating. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. Because uh, you got you got you got him. The gay you got front. the Asian girl messing with the other dude. Oh yeah, it's all type of stuff. The, the mom. The, the, the mom is Asian, messing with the uh, father. Right, and then you got the uh, the Asian that the, the multiply, messing yeah. with the weird black type dude. I think he black. I don't know what he is. I think he black, but he a weirdo. Yeah, I know you talking about. Yeah, and and what's the uh the the girl that uh with the what's the girl name that has the um what in the world is her powers? She can fly and she's shit. A, she's that, that like pink. a witch. She's like um she's like the uh, Scarlet Witch from uh, Marvel. Oh okay. Now what's that? Her her insignia is like is no gender neutral or some shit. Right, that's what I was looking at that too the other day. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's like yeah. some female neutral stuff. Mm -hmm. Good good show everybody, but you know nowadays you got to instead of just having telling the story, you got to deal with all that shit. Like the the gay best friend he hanging around with, and he talking about banging a dude, and he going to going that's on what I, told Shane. I, said, I said you can be friends with a gay dude, but no straight guy going to be best friends with a gay dude hanging out type friend, right you know what I mean? right my man is going there to, to sleep with the cows guy ain't no way in the world he gonna tag along with him now you blowing everything up for him mm -hmm. and 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 he's saying well they he took the girl with him but they could have went on a separate trip they didn't have to go with him <laughs> yeah and i'm like it, it, it's funny how he finally told his girl that he was invincible and she don't give a right. shit. She like she called him a coward and she was done with him. Hey, you giving it away. You giving that away. Thanks well, a lot. No, because I'm at the. I only watched the one with the college uh thing. That was the last episode I seen. Okay. Thank, 
Thank well, you. it's the same. It's the same college part, but uh, yeah, you do that to me all the time with TV. <laughs> I tell you, I didn't watch something. You go right into the details. No, I, no, because then you'll start talking about it too. So I'm thinking you watched it. No, I ain't watched nothing, and I told you I ain't watched stuff, and you still talk about it. So uh, what did you what did you think of Barry at first sight? Um, that shit was a joke for one. Mm-hmm. Because they keep bringing up, they keep bringing up like God and the, you know stuff like that, and it's like if you really believe that, then you're making a whole mockery of the whole marriage situation. You know what okay. I mean? Because right. uh, how can you have those vows with somebody you never met? You know what I mean? And then you got the dude, and 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 I told Shay I don't think none of these couples going to work out. I think I said all all of the guys should run for the hill. Yes. Gene. So, and except except the one dude, I think the girl should run for because he's the weirdo. But everybody else is the, you know what I mean? No. Yeah, I know you talking about Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Russell Wilson and, and well, he he won't sleep with her for some unknown reason. I don't know. And you got because he well, said he want to make it make it right. So what he want like? Well, uh, they they was trying to say like his dad was a pastor and he was all about the church and all that. But then they they came out. She came out and told that she was hooking him up every night. So right. what's the, what, what's that about? Well, well, if that's the case, if you really a hardcore religious like that, why are you on a, a TV show? Exactly. Getting married. He's so, full of crap. And uh, uh, muscle bound and his girl, I'd have been left her ass. If it weren't for that TV show, I'd have been packed my shit up and got the hell about it there. Cause she's very condescending to him too. And then when he says something to her about it, it's like she gets all freaked out or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'll be out of there. And like you said about the uh, how she got on him because he didn't wear any sneakers when they went to batting cage. And he said, well, this is where I feel comfortable. If that's where he feel comfortable, how are you going to tell him what to wear or she not? Told him, she told him you don't know how to dress comfortable. <laughs> right. And that's how he feel comfortable, wearing his uh, cowboy shoes and some jeans. And like you said, it's not like he's sliding and running around bases or whatever. They only just hitting balls in the, in exactly. the uh, batting cage. Uh-huh. And you got you got Latino man and and the sister. Latino man need to just loosen up. He need to just loosen up. What's wrong with getting on a damn horse? I don't want, I don't see what's wrong with getting on a damn horse. I don't see well, any problem. Well, Shay said the same thing. She wouldn't get on a horse. Well, why not? She's scared of him. Oh, what you think? The horse gonna go and just like run real fast, go bucking and running. Yeah, I said no, they don't do all that. Especially these are no. trained horses. Now, yeah. if you caught you a wild horse, I can understand. But right, a trained horse, they are not doing all that. And, and plus, the uh, the lady is right there, so them horses ain't gonna buck up. Now, unless you jerk it real hard and and all that stuff, then it if you jerk it back, it then it'll like pop up in the air. But you ain't gonna jerk the horse back like that. But I agree with him when he said, well, he told her, he said, don't be surprised at me with all this and that, getting in the cage with sharks and doing all this crazy stuff. He put it out there now, so you know, you know what I mean? Because it was me, I wouldn't put it out there. But if it's something I don't want to do, I would just say no. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm not doing it. But uh, he's full of crap, too, because he always talk about working out, but he got the biggest belly on the show. <laughs> he wear the tightest clothes. Like, if, you're that, if your belly that big, why are you wearing them tight-ass jeans and tight-ass shirts? But they mm-hmm. keep talking about how you got to work out and all this. And uh, the thing is, the girl, the girl. Now we already know the Latino culture; they big on family. You know, the first thing that dude wanted some kids. No, so why you got? Like, you got to run from the hill from her too, because she's the one that was saying like she wanted to wait three or four years, and then right. she started saying when well, she got high blood pressure, she don't know if she want to have kids and all this stuff. She's just making excuses. Right now, you know, when it comes to Latino, I, have you ever seen a Latino person been married three years and not have children? They don't. They don't do that stuff. They big on. They big on family. I always mm-hmm. tell my. I always tell my mom Jennifer Lopez is like the damn outcast in her family because she had kids in what her early thirties, mid thirties. Mm-hmm. She had kids young at, at an old age, and you know they have kids when they like nineteen, mm-hmm. so eighteen, nineteen. So then you got the Navy pilot and his girl. That girl is a, a whack job. And he he needs to get the fuck up out of there. And I don't still don't understand with this sleeping over a, a friend's a male friend's house like that. It was funny because she said it's just like uh me and my best gay best friends hanging out. And the, judge, the doctor was like, "Well, are they gay?" And she was like, "No." <laughs> okay, one and, thing lead to another. You got a room. You got a room with 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 a male and a female. One thing is bound to happen. Mm-hmm. She's sleeping on that couch every night, like she's saying. Right. They you get, already, 
they both drunk and they start she, talking about their feelings each other. She wake up in the she wake up in the morning talking about mimosas and she want to drink first thing in the morning. And then throughout the episode, she always got a drink in her hand. She's alcoholic. And you want us to believe you just going over these guys' house to crash on the couch? Yeah, okay. Right. No, I don't believe. Well, I told you, uh, he should be like, well, all right, then you want to have friends and male friends and all that stuff. How about when I'm out of town, I'm going to see a damn escort. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sleeping with the escort now. We just talking and hanging out because you can have that. Uh, what they call that girlfriend experience. <laughs> you, can, you can do that girlfriend experience. Then. All right. I'll just see an escort then because that don't make any sense. Even the darn uh, pastor told her that it's like, well, look, I'm married. I wasn't like that neither. And it's like she's well, still on hair. Well, what about him saying I'm allergic to cats? And she's like, well, I can't let my cats not sleep in the bed with us. Yeah. Yeah. You like, like well, you can just shut them out of the door. She's like, I'm not gonna keep them out of our bedroom. Like, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I heard enough. Bye. <laughs> it's been real. So he got to lay in bed with her and two damn cats. Eyes burning, sneezing, right? And, and he already, like you said, he told her that he was allergic, but he gonna have to. Oh, then how about when she said take medication? Mm -hmm. Well, you can take medication. <laughs> <laughs> it's not she like come on he said well my eyes i gotta deal with my eyes burning and getting all snotty stuff she's like it's not that big you'll be fine but really you got a, two cats and a dog you know the, you, you, i'll let you bring one pet here the other two gotta go <laughs> damn where are they going to hey shelter give them away i don't know <laughs> damn now see that's cool right there you trying to get rid of uh uh, uh animals and stuff now you definitely won't be like that's all right. <laughs> all right, then, y'all. Thanks for listening to us in our uh, little TV time. Oh, uh, movies. <laughs> What's the last movie you watched? Uh, the last movie I watched? Oh, I watched this. Uh, What's the uh, Nate Parker? Did you see the, the one when the cop killed his uh his kid? Yeah, I did. Took... Yeah, go ahead. That was the last one I saw. Okay, I thought it was it was all right. The dialogue when it was in the in the uh, the police station. The only mm -hmm. thing I hated, see, the only thing I hated, and this is what they do with what what we do, what black people do. We want to include everybody in it. Okay, first it was black black a uh, black thing, black against a black man against the cops. Then the women want to get involved. Then you got the uh, Mexican brother talking about how he was harassed and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like you add like one at a time. Why I got to be all this stuff? Yeah, but what about the women? I did this and that. And then, then my, uh, then the Latino brother started talking Spanish about how he was mistreating everything. Come on now. I liked it too, and I knew he was gonna, he was gonna get popped at the end. You know what I mean? Because that's just the way it is. He should have, and there's nothing he could do. The only thing he could have did was, uh, I don't know, came out and masked or laid on the ground. You know what I mean? And let them move in on him. Because then, if it's being recorded, he on the ground, they wouldn't just execution him. You know what I mean? Right, the uh, last uh, I thought it was, I thought it was good though I liked it. The last one I seen is uh what was is it outside the wire is that what it's called with uh uh McKee Anthony McKee and the, the brother that plays on Snowfall. It, I, I I think is his first oh, name. Oh, I just saw him all, Yeah, I put that in my queue. I didn't I didn't watch it yet. Yeah, it ain't it ain't bad. It ain't bad. It's like a uh, it looked like a, a a future future war movie or something. Yeah, what they use yeah. uh the robots as like grunks. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't see that one. Yeah, that was that was a uh, watchable. I mean, wouldn't pay to see it, but watch it on a Saturday. I don't have nothing to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> you can reach us on Facebook and Twitter at PNL Judgmentals. Instagram at the two underscore judgmentals or email us at PNL judgmentals at gmail.com. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. Yeah. All right. Peace out. Uh, uh. Hey, yo, man, it's your time. Your time. time. And fuck poverty. 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 Get this money, man. Fuck you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? I can tell you're mad at me just by how your face look. You can check the status.